Hey everyone, in today's Photoshop video, I wanna show you the 10 most useful ways that you could use Photoshop. Now, you could use Photoshop for a lot of different things, thousands of different ways to use Photoshop, but in the 15 years or so that I've been using Photoshop, these are the 10 most frequent ways I use Photoshop. So I wanted to make a quick video to show you how to do it. Now I'm gonna go kind of fast, so if you need more resources, I have a couple of resources in the description below this video. First is a free trial to Photoshop, so if you don't have Photoshop, and you're curious about how it works, you could download it and follow along with this video. And second, I have a full course about five hours worth of content. So if you're a beginner to Photoshop, you go ahead and check that out after you watch this video. Let's jump in so I could show you the 10 ways that I use Photoshop most often. The very first tip I wanna share with you is how to remove anything inside of a photo in Photoshop. Let's say I wanna remove this other person from this image. That's exactly what I'm gonna show you. It's very simple. Come to the left side and we're gonna use the lasso tool. So that's the keyboard shortcut L. And we're just gonna draw around this person. So I'm just clicking once and drawing and I'm not letting go till I complete this and I let go now. And I have this selection here around that person. All I have to do now with that selection is right click here. I'm on a Mac so I'm pressing control click and I'll just have to press fill right here. And this fill box right here, I want the content to be content aware. So this is called content aware fill, meaning Photoshop is scanning the rest of the picture to decide what's gonna go behind this person. So I'm gonna press okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and deselect my selection here. And look at that, that person just disappeared and Photoshop filled in the background for me. It's amazing. The next useful tip in Photoshop is removing backgrounds in pictures and replacing those backgrounds with a different background. So in the case of this picture, I'm gonna remove this wall and replace it with a solid color. This is how you do it. Come on the left side and click down on the quick selection tool and we want the object selection tool. It's one of the fastest way to select someone and I'm just gonna draw this rectangle and let go. And by default, it has these marching ants and that's my selection. Now, all I have to do is right click here and I wanna choose layer via copy. And I have two layers now. Now, if I turn off the first one, you could see this is the one without the background. So I remove the background just like that. Now I'm gonna replace it. I wanna make a solid color background. To do that, I'm gonna use a the rectangle tool here. So I'll select this. And for the fill color, I'll go ahead and click on this box up here and I'll choose a different one. Let's go with a blue color here and click away. And now all I have to do is grab from this corner and drag to the bottom and let go. And this is gonna be my background, except right now it's in front of my image. And now if I come over here to my layer panel, let me just make this a little bit taller for you. I have to take this layer and bring it down underneath my image and just like that it makes it the background this could be my final image i still need to do a little bit of retouching around my selection but i just wanted to quickly show you how easy it is to replace a background in photoshop this next tip comes in really handy and that's to change the color of anything inside of photoshop so i have this red car here and let's say i want to make it blue so in order to do that, it's really, really simple. Have your image layer selected here. So I just have the car open and come down here to this half filled circle here, click it. And we're gonna create an adjustment layer for hue and saturation. Click that option right here. And it opens this box right here and it creates a new layer on top. Now, all we have to do here under the master dropdown, click that. And we're gonna choose one of the color that is the closest to the color of what we want to change. In this case, it's easily red, but in whichever case, just choose one of these colors that's closest to your image. I'll choose red here. And all I have to do is this hue bar right here. I just need to move it left or right to change the color. You see that? It's that simple. So if I wanted to make it blue, for example, I'll basically move it this way to the left, the opposite of what I want here. So you can kind of see the range of the colors that it's choosing. It's going from purple here to red. So this range of blue is being selected. And if I move it the other way, you could see on the bottom is changing the hue 
back to red and if i go this way it's going to change it to green that's how you change the color of anything inside of photoshop The next tip inside of Photoshop is creating text with the text tool inside of Photoshop. Now using text in Photoshop comes in really, really handy. You may see it on all my YouTube videos. They all have text on the thumbnail picture. So to do that, you come on the left side and you pick the text tool here or the keyboard shortcut T and you click anywhere on your image and you should have a new layer for text here and your menu bar here will show you all the different options for your text so if my text is highlighted here i could click in this box here and change the color so let's say i wanted to choose white text here i could just move this around to change the color of my text i'll press ok i could choose a different font family so this is one of my favorites here i could grab this t here and go up with it to change the size and when i'm all set with my selections up here i could press the check mark and now if I go back to the move tool up here, keyboard shortcut for it is V, I could go ahead and place this anywhere inside of my image. And what's nice about text is if you double click the layer of the text here, you get all these layer styles for your text. So one of my favorite ones is drop shadow. So I'll just select drop shadow and you can see this nice drop shadow under your text to really separate it from your background. The next option is reducing the size of your image in Photoshop. So when you open an image, you will see the size right down here. This is 8.4 megabytes, which is a pretty large image. So to reduce the size, I'm just gonna have this image open here. I'll go to file and I'll go to export and I'm gonna go to export as. This is probably one of the most useful dialog boxes inside of Photoshop because you could reduce the image size that's the width and the height of the image here. And you could also reduce the image quality here that will change the size and you could change the format. So if you want a JPEG or PNG, those are some of the more useful options for saving. And you could see the size over here. It's now 400 kilobytes now if I export it in that size. But if I go ahead and change the width and kind of cut it down here, let's say I'll reduce it to 500 and I'll just press tab here and you reduce the height accordingly, you could see it's only 67 kilobytes from the original eight megabyte file that I had started with. And I'll just have to press export. This is a great way if you're sending lots of images via email or if you're using the image on the web. The next Photoshop tip is how to wind teeth inside of Photoshop. So it's actually a really simple process, but it takes a few steps. So I'll show you the quick way here. I'm gonna go over here to the lasso tool or L and I'm gonna select around my teeth. I'm just gonna make this selection so I don't interfere with the rest of the image. And I'll do this pretty quickly here, but take your time with this. And I'm gonna go ahead and right click on it and I'm gonna do layer via copy to create a independent layer here on the right side. Now with this layer selected, there's a tool over here, if you go on this side, it's called the Dodge Tool. Select the Dodge Tool. Now, if you come on the teeth with the Dodge Tool, you see that circle here, the black one, not the red one. That's the size of my brush. So I could change that if I wanted to make it slightly bigger here. So I'll go to 100 and my hardness is set to zero. And these are the rest of my selections here if you want to follow. Now, if I come over here and I just drag over here on the teeth, you could see is easily widening the teeth just using the simple method of the dodge tool and i would just kind of go around and do my best here to make the selection and there's another tool right here with inside of the dodge tool called the sponge tool select that option and basically with the sponge tool selected if you look on top you want to make sure vibrance is checked off and you can remove some of the yellow here on the teeth by dragging it it's basically taking out the colors or making it more desaturated. So between the dodge tool and the sponge tool, you could easily wind teeth inside of Photoshop. This Photoshop tip is gonna be about removing blemishes. Now, a lot of times when you hear an image has been Photoshopped, this is what they're talking about. That's when people remove any imperfection inside of an image. So you definitely don't want to overdo this so people don't say that was Photoshop. But let me show you how to subtly make some 
changes to an image and remove blemishes. The tool we want to use is called the clone tool and it's over here. Go ahead and select it and the shortcut for it is S. And how this tool works is a brush. So look on the top here, you have your size. So mine set to 90. So I'll go ahead and increase my brush size a little bit to, for example, 100. And I'm gonna come down here and you need to sample an area and then use that sampled area to replace another area. So I'm gonna press and hold option on Mac or Alt on PC. When your cursor turns this way, you need to click. And I, I could go over the mole here and I could select and I could press it. And I'll press it one more time to replace that mole here. So I could do the same thing with any imperfections that I want to replace here. So any of these makeup dots here, I could go ahead and option or alt click and then come over here and replace that spot. And it's that simple to use the clone tool in Photoshop to fix blemishes on any image. Now let me show you how to make an image brighter inside of Photoshop. So this example is just a Rubik's cube here sitting in front of me on my desk. And as you can see, the image is dark and it's also very dull. It doesn't have enough color. So the best way to do that is with that layer selected with my image open, I'll come to image up here and I'll come down here to auto contrast. And you can see it did a decent job. It definitely brought out some of the colors and the contrast is, is better, but it's still not bright enough. So let me show you what else you could do. Come over to image and instead of the auto options here, go to adjustment and these four will change the brightness or darkness of your image. So in this case, I'm gonna choose brightness and contrast and I get this bar here and I wanna bring brightness up. And just like that, I'm making my image nice and bright. And I could play around with contrast here if I want it to be more or less contrasty. And these also have an auto option. So I could press auto here to see what that's gonna do. And it does a pretty good job here fixing my brightness for this image that started pretty dark. You could also use the same option with adjustment and do it with hue and saturation. If you select this option, you can make your images a lot more colorful by bringing saturation up, you could see the reds are getting a lot more red here and bring them down if they are too saturated. So those are some useful options for brightness and saturation for fixing images in Photoshop. This next tip comes in really handy in Photoshop and that's cropping your image here. So in the case of this image, let's say I didn't want all these dead space on the left or right side. I just wanted the Rubik's cube and the reflection. So to crop, there is a tool for that. Over here, the crop tool, keyboard shortcut C. If you select that option, you get these cropping edges or you get all these options on top for cropping. So if I select the ratio here, I have all these options. So if I wanted to do square, for example, I could choose that and you could see it brings my crop factor to a square and I could go ahead and move this around and move my image within that square here. Let me just go ahead and cancel this. I'll just go back to width and height here and I'm gonna do it myself. I'm gonna grab these corners here and I'm gonna bring this one this way and I'll bring this one this way here and I'll go ahead and let go. And if I press the check mark, my cropping is complete. It comes in very, very handy and it's one of the most useful tools in Photoshop, the cropping tool. In tip number 10, I wanna show you how to put an image inside of text. And it's really simple. So I just create a background here, just a solid color background with the rectangle tool. Now I'm gonna create a new text layer. So I'm gonna press T or press the text tool over here and click and type out my text. Again, I have my text really big because I want the image to really come across. So I use this font that shows them really big here and I have 800 points as my size. I'll press the check mark and let me select the move tool again and move this right in the center of this background. Now, I need another layer, which is the image layer. So let me go and find that. I'm gonna use this one here and I'm gonna go ahead and grab it and bring it inside of Photoshop. So now I have three different layers, the image layer, the text layer, and the background. I'm just gonna grab the image layer here, and all I have to do is if I hold Option or Alt, 
And then if I just come between the two, you see that right there between the two, it changes my arrow to a drop down. So that's what I want to do with option or alt holding. I'll click and just like that, it put this image inside of the text underneath. So as long as you have the layers in this order, all you have to do is hold option or alt and click right there and it will create this effect. Now I could still move this image around so it will look better here in my text and I could always double click the text and make the size a little bit bigger if I want to see more of the background and I'll press the check mark. And it's that easy to put an image inside of text in Photoshop. Now I know that was a lot of information that I threw at you, but in the description below this video, there are more resources, a lot of free videos on YouTube that I've created on all those different things in more detail. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for easy to follow tech videos and I'll catch you next time.